everybody. Um, this is a continuation of the video that I did earlier in the week. And in that video, I looked at a common difficult to handle format of stack data and then how we can take and apply some cool tricks using Modulo and Pivot and some cleaning functions within Power Query to translate that data quite quickly and easily into a usable format. And so what I wanted to do today was to continue that discussion and show for something like this where it's very likely that you're going to need to repeat this process, that if this if this type of format resulted from a from a copy and paste, it's probably going to happen again. And so in that case, what you're probably going to want to need to do is build a, a custom function that's going to be reusable on multiple reports and multiple tables, regardless of how they're they're named and what else is in those tables. And so you don't have to have watched that video to dive into this one. Um, it may help you provide some background, but the, the general processes I'm going to talk about are applicable to really any custom functions. And so this one just happens to be I mean, the one that handles stack data, but it could be it could be any other function that you need it to be reusable. So let's jump into Power Query on this. And what we've got is if we go to our if we go to our data table, we've got in the advanced editor, we've got the M code for how we we ended up going from that stack data to the the desired format and what we can now do if we want to reuse this is is to take and right click on on data and say create function and it says it's not going to reference any parameters it's okay to create a function without parameters and we're going to answer yes because we're going to add the parameters as we go in the advanced editor and we'll call this function unstack three elements um, just because we've got we've got the three rows in the raw format if we had a two row format we'd, we'd probably build a separate one that was two elements or a four um, but let's just call this one three so we know exactly what type of, of data it'll handle um, as an inflow okay so what we've now got is this invoke we've got no parameters and let's go to the advanced editor and start start working this one so the first thing we want to do is we don't need we don't need this this source right here because we're gonna we're gonna use the function parameters to define our source and so Let's take this, move it down here. Okay, and so now what we want to do is we want to define that parameter that's going to be coming in. And the way we do that is just with an open paren and then a parameter name. And let's call this uh, stack. And stack is going to be that one column of data that is the unformatted um, stack data that came in from the the paste of the email addresses and what we want this to do is to come in as a list and then this is the the notation we use to initiate a function custom function and then we want this to result in a table because as we unpivot it from that single column to multiple columns, that goes from a, a list to a table. And so now what we want, we're going to need to do is we're going to take and we're going to need to convert that, um, that incoming list to a table so that we can add our, our index, initiate our modulo, unpivot, do all the things we need to do to reformat that. And that takes the form of a table to begin with. Um, so let's take and we'll call it convert stack. 
and that is going to use a function called table from list. And like many M functions, it does exactly what it says. It just takes a list, and in this case, the list is going to be our stack list, and it just creates a, a table convert stack from that from that list. And we just add a column after comma after that. And now what we need to do is in source here, we need to replace that with our convert stack. Okay, and if we look a little further down the line, that looks pretty good. Okay. So we've got no we've got no syntax errors and let's hit done. Okay, and now it's giving us what we what we wanted, which is it's giving us the ability to choose a column. And so before we do that, let's take a look at our test data. And this is the data that we're going to we're going to operate on and test uh, the the function. And so this is just what we talked about. What you if you've seen the previous video, what you saw in that video, which is the misformatted data of last name, first name, and email address. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to take and we want to choose that column in our test data and choose the value column. And then we're going to hit invoke. And even though as we were coding through that, it looked pretty straightforward and it didn't throw any obvious errors. Um, this is not going to work. And I'll, I'll show you here when we hit invoke. And the, the problem here is, is twofold. One of which is we've got an error. But the second problem is that it's really hard to pinpoint what this error is. It just said error occurred in the query, expression error, column value of the table wasn't found, but it doesn't tell you where it wasn't found. Because one of the problems with custom functions is they don't break out the applied steps. That you just get one step for the entire, the entire custom function. But there's a way around that in the debugging that I'll show you. And it'll make it a lot easier to figure out what's going on here. Because when I first ran this, I, I hit invoke and I expected it to to work fine and when it didn't it was hard to track down what was going on unstack and so here's what we want to do which is instead of running this for the moment as a function we're going to run it as a query and the way we do that is we comment out the the function and now what we've got to do is we've got to just manually initiate that stack call. So we've got to define what stack is because we're not we're not drawing it through the the interaction of choosing it in the in the invoke. Um, so we have stack is equal to test data and the value column of test data and comma And then we go convert stack, table from list stack, and this should this should work. Okay, so it, what it does is it it breaks it down now into the applied steps, and this is going to be instrumental in figuring out why this isn't working. So, in the first first step, that seems to work fine. Um, it just pulls the list in. Convert stack, that pulls in fine. But if we look at this, we notice one interesting thing. That when we pull stack in initially, it pulls in as test, uh, test bracket value. But when we convert it to a table, instead of value being the, the column header, the column header is now column 1. And if we remember the, the error message, it was that it couldn't find the value column. And the reason it couldn't find the value column is in that, in that table from list function, it, it renames that to column 1. And so if we go into the advanced editor, what we'll see here 
is actually let's let's keep going down the list. So add index works okay. Modulo works okay. Ah, add custom. This is where we get an error. And this is where that value of record wasn't found. And so if we if we go to the advanced editor and we, we find that custom field, we can see that this is the text remove where we're taking out those junk characters that we didn't need. But it's still referring to the value field. So if we change that to column one, and then here in the remove columns, it refers to value. So we change that to column one. And if M had a better editor, we could just do a, a blanket search and replace. Um, but that looks right now like the only, the only places where value is. And if we, we go back and step through, that custom column is now throwing the right values. The remove column works. And then we st we can step through step by step step by step and see that the function is doing exactly what it should. And when we get to the end, it produces the, the perfect end result. So now that we know this is working right, we just have one more thing we need to do. And if you remember, in order to debug it, we turned the the custom function into a query. And so now we need to take that query and turn it back into a function. And so to do that, we just go up here and we comment out the manual assignment of stack. And we take out the comments to activate the, the function element where we're pulling stack in as a parameter interactively. And we just hit done. And now let's take a look at test data. And that's our raw data. And what we should have happen is we pull test data in through the parameter. We click on value, hit OK. And now we should hit invoke and have it perfectly give us the end result formatted table. And that's exactly what it does. So this custom function now, we've, we've debugged it, we've tested it. It's working great. And so now what we can do is anytime we have a, a three element stack, we can just choose that column, you know, select that table, choose that column within the table and run that function and have it apply the, the modulo, the unpivot and the cleaning that we, um, that we did prior. And what we could do is we could, we could further parameterize this to make it even a little more flexible so that instead of always having it be these junk characters, we could actually have the user input those characters as a parameter and then carry that forward into the function so that there's flexibility in what characters it cleans. So that should give you, I think, some pretty nice tools in terms of creating custom functions and then also remembering that trick about debugging by turning it back into a query from a, a function and then switching it back after the debugging is a, is a really valuable uh, tool that makes it much easier to debug custom functions than it otherwise would be if you just had everything as one step. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.